In this video, we're gonna take a look at nine really well-built Jeep Wranglers that have got some great upgrades to them. And I don't think it matters what you drive, whether it's a Toyota or a Subaru or a Land Rover, you're gonna see some upgrades that are applicable across the board, some really cool custom stuff in this video. I think you guys are gonna love checking out these vehicles. And yes, I did break down and cut my own hair because of the current world situation, but that's all good. I just feel like I'm back in boot camp again. Stay tuned. Welcome to Trail Recon, I'm Brad, and today in this video, we're gonna take a look at nine vehicles that have been submitted by viewers like you that are really well built and they are really nice. I cannot wait to show you some of the modifications that have been done to these Jeeps. And we're gonna take a look at Wranglers only in this episode because I've had so many submissions of just Jeep Wranglers. But we've got CJs, we've got YJ, TJ, JK, JL, I think we've got them all covered, uh, but there's some really cool vehicles in there. Now, what I'd like to know as we're going along in the comments, what is the standout modification that you think is really noteworthy? There's a lot of cool ones. It's gonna to be tough to choose. All right, let's jump to the first clip video and we're gonna start in Arizona. Welcome to Arizona. My name's Christopher and this is Gadget, my 2016 Jeep JK Unlimited Rubicon. She looks pretty typical for a Jeep on 35s, uh, but she's got a couple of tricks up her sleeve and that's what I wanna show you in this video. So one project I just recently finished is the onboard water system. That's the main output for it right there is the sprayer. Here's a switch. Once it's on, there's an on-demand pump that only kicks on when you spray. And I like this sprayer because it also has a lock-on feature. It does do hot water. The heat exchanger is in the engine bay. And then there's a 7-gallon water tank underneath the Jeep and an RV gravity style water inlet on the side of the Jeep. Another feature up front is part of the onboard air system. I've got two quick connect couplers here and I hook up two custom hoses that I made and I've got a digital programmable pressure switch. And what that does is basically I hook up all four tires, the compressor kicks on automatically and when it gets to just the right PSI for the street, it kicks off automatically. So while it's airing up, I can be doing whatever and not have to keep checking the tire pressure. In the back of the Jeep, I made a custom bracket to hold this Expedition 1 jerry can. I made this bracket to hold the rear camera, third brake light, and it's magnetic because I run a bag back here that's kind of like a trash and I put a couple of uh, metal strips on it so that I can just stick that to the bag. Here you can see a uh, Crawler Concepts rear bumper. Uh, this is a low profile bumper, but it wasn't quite low profile enough to work with my tire carrier. So I had to notch this out and weld some plate in there. It did end right here. I extended these uh, corners and, and to make them wrap around and added some reinforcement underneath there. My ham and CB antenna mount that's also custom that mounts to the TerraFlex rear tire carrier. One of the first things I made for the Jeep was this fold down table. It's very similar to some of the commercial ones. I just wanted to make my own. I use these jump seat brackets that are meant for a boat seat to fold up, uh, actually. Um, but I flipped them over so that I get a nice sturdy table. Uh, I've got a couple of cup holders here. These are sturdy enough to hold a bottle of wine, cutting board, knife, a bamboo slide out table. Inside the Jeep, I've got one drawer and a slide for the fridge. I made all of this out of half inch plywood and then Raptor lined it. I keep um, mostly tools, spare parts, um, everything like JB Weld and duct tape all inside this drawer all the time. Stuff that I just want to keep in the Jeep at all times. I made this so that you still have access to the factory jack location. And the fridge is a combination 12 volt and 120 volt. When I'm at home loading up, I'll go ahead and hook it up to the uh, 120 where the license plate used to be. I actually put in an extension cord port right there. So I just run my extension cord, plug it in there, and the fridge is then running off a of house power instead of draining down the battery. Also in the back here, I've got a front runner cargo shelf, and mounted to that is my foldable shovel, my Fisker's axe, and then I've got a custom bracket that holds the high lift. I like to keep everything inside so that the outside stays minimal looking and it's easy to go through a car wash, nothing gets stolen, that sort of thing. I made a custom attic bracket that holds these imitation Max tracks. 
You can see there are some pieces with hinges here behind the back seat. Those fold down and make a sleep platform. So I fold the passenger seat forward and my head goes that direction. My feet go down here near the fridge. It might be a little claustrophobic for some people, but it works great for me. Inside Gadget, there's this Android tablet. I use that mainly for GPS and mapping. It also has 4G Verizon service. I stream Pandora typically from there over to this Pioneer head unit. This has OBD2 integration as well. You can get gauges and do check engine light diagnostics. It also has a rear view camera. Up here is the ham radio faceplate and microphone and a custom switch plate for my CB radio. Gadget also has a very custom push button start system. This fob is a proximity key, so as I approach the vehicle, it unlocks automatically. I also installed a CarLink cellular remote start system, and I can even see exactly where she's at on a map with uh, GPS tracking that's built into that system. Well, that about wraps it up. Thanks for watching. All right, while wow, that is a very well-built vehicle, I love some of those custom upgrades. Some of that stuff I've never seen before. That was really a joy to take a look at. I would love to see that vehicle in person someday. I'll maybe have to make a trip out to Arizona for it. Thanks for sharing that, I really appreciate it. Okay, let's take a look at a very nice TJ. Hi Brad, my name is Jack Losco, and my vehicle is a 2006 Jeep Rubicon. It's the LJ model. For me, my Jeep is more than just a ride or a build. It is my legs. The Jeep has allowed me to meet and befriend some of the most awesome people on this planet. The front axle and suspension consist of a Dynatrack Pro Rock Dana 60. The suspension system is a three link with a track bar. I'm running 14 inch ORI nitrogen struts and we round out the system with a generate high steer kit. Up front I wanted to keep things simple yet functional. The factory bumper has been replaced with a generate aluminum version that also consists of the trail stinger. Mounted to the incorporated winch plate is a worn Xeon 10S Platinum. On the end of the synthetic rope, I've replaced the hook with a Factor 55 flat link and a steel shackle. Moving around to the side, my wheels are ATX slabs with beadlocks, the tires are 40 inch Nitto trail grapplers, and my fenders are by Metal Cloak. My side armor includes Poison Spider steel rock sliders as well as Poison Spider full corners. They are also in steel. The rear suspension is a double triangulated four link also with the 14 inch ORIs. Coming around the back you can see the Generate aluminum rear fenders and the aluminum rear bumper by Savvy. Moving in a little closer, you can see the full-size spare mounted on an aluminum Generite tire carrier. Also mounted on the tire carrier is a two-gallon Rotopax for some spare gasoline, an outboard mounted fire extinguisher, and my fire stick CB antenna. Moving inside the rear cargo area, on the inside of the tailgate, you can see that I have a two-gallon roto packs for potable water, a high lift jack, and an axe mounted on the roll cage. Taking a closer look at the rear cargo area, you can see I have items such as jumper cables, a max device. In front of that I have a swag aluminum tie down for my action packer. On the left you see the custom built toolbox with an ARB recovery strap. And in front of that are some first aid items, and more recovery. Moving into the driver's seat. At first glance, the area may look rather close and cluttered. However, for me, the equipment must be located very specifically because of my limited range of motion as a result of my paralysis. Let's take a closer look at the cockpit. On the right hand side is my Icom 5100A ham radio, 
Above that is the CB. On the line coming down from the CB is my Bluetooth for my ham radio. It is Vox, so it allows me to be completely hands-free. Just below that is a large touch screen for my EMC AVID 2.0 driving system. The joystick in front of that is an x-axis for my steering. Then above that I have a touch screen for my S-Pod switching station. And then over here I have a y-axis joystick. Brad, it's like you've said many times in the past. It's all about the memories that we build. And we build those memories through our off-road vehicles. Whether it's memories of a garage project with your family or friends or it's an overlanding adventure of several days or just running a simple trail with friends and accomplishing obstacles in their presence so thank you very much Oh, Jack, what an awesome TJ build. So inspiring. And to see you out on the rocks at the end there, man, that was so cool. I love it. Thank you for your submission. I hope to catch you out on the trail someday. That would be really cool. All right, let's go take a look at a cool silver JK. What's going on, Trail Recon family? My name is Jason, and I hope you enjoyed checking out the Jeep that I've been able to build out over the last year. Let's have some fun checking it out together. When I bought this Jeep, it had an old man emu two and a half inch heavy spring lift and a smitty built winch. It was a blank canvas. My only question was, could this vehicle take me, my wife, and my three sons all over the country for an extended period of time? We want to camp, fish, hunt, ski, and wheel all over the country. So far, my favorite additions have to be the roof rack, the suspension, and my tailgate table. They've all enabled us to do more with less. Each piece plays a critical role in my family's trips, from sleep to storage to ride quality and food prep. All of these are necessities for our overlanding adventures. So you notice we've also built this thing out with storage every place possible so we can be gone for as long as we want to be without sacrificing a change of clothes and good food. That means that we use our tire bag for all of our rescue gear so that the rest of the Jeep can be used for food, clothing, and warmth. The reason that I went with a Jeep is simple. They're the easiest vehicle to customize to your exact needs, from attics to racks to mounts to bags. Nearly everything is a bolt-on, no engineering required. So for a novice like me, that means adventures were just a wrench and a screwdriver away. We've traveled all over our area, and once the stay-at-home orders are lifted, we can't wait to travel into Colorado, Utah, and beyond. I just want to give a special shout out to Brad for inspiring this build. We watch the trips that you've taken together as a family. Your channel, for me, was a gateway into overlanding. And now we're helping other people to get in the door too. So thank you for checking out my Jeep and I hope everybody stays safe out there. Uh, Jason, you had me at Silver JK. That's a, you know near and dear to my heart, obviously. What a great build, man, and that looks like an awesome rig to take the family out and have some cool adventures. Okay, let's go take a look at a CJ that took three and a half years to restore. Hello, everyone. My name is Albert, and I am in Asheville, North Carolina, and I would like to show you my project, my 1983 Jeep CJ7. Okay, folks, so this is a 1983 Jeep CJ7. Uh, I bought it in October of 2016, and I gave myself three years to, to go ahead and rebuild this Jeep. So I brought it here, I, I started tearing it apart, uh, it, didn't, it didn't run, it had been parked for over three years, and uh, brought it here, tore it apart, took the body off the frame, and, and took the frame all the way down to the ground, uh, the suspension was shot, and I started uh, rebuilding it from there. Uh, put a four inch lift, uh, new springs, new shocks. Uh, service for both front and rear axles and after that I replaced all the steering components then I started working with the uh, with the engine I had the engine rebuilt and I rebuilt the transmission uh, the engine is a AMC 258 straight six and the transmission has got a T5 uh, both have been rebuilt and the transfer case was serviced as well as to the body I went ahead and, and had to replace a lot. I had to replace the entire tub. The existing tub was totally rotted out. The, the floors were no good. Uh, the fenders were, were pretty bad shape. Uh, the hood, the, the frame, the window frame, the, 
not the window, but the windshield. And uh, all that had to be replaced. Uh, actually, the only things that I used were the roll bar, the, the tailgate, uh, the dash panel, and one fender. As to the paint, what I did was I painted the entire Jeep first, and then I did some sanding, and I went ahead and applied the, the tintable liner. I wanted to do something different with this Jeep, and uh, I sprayed it on the outside, but the inside, the dashboard, and the inside of the windshield frame, uh, I left it with regular paint, but the outside has all been, uh, it's, it's got a liner on. The headlights that I chose are uh, JK headlights. Uh, they fit perfectly. The only thing I had to do was buy a wire harness so I can make the electrical part work. But these are, in fact, JK OEM headlights. As for wheels and tires, uh, I decided to go with the uh, Krager Nomad 2 wheels, chrome, uh, wagon style. Uh, tires, you can see I went with the Milestar Patagonias. Uh, wheels are 15 by 10. Uh, tires are 35 by 12, 50, 15. And I wanted to use my center caps for my original wagon wheels. So I had to drill some holes on, on each wheel. And I was able to adapt the original Jeep center caps on, on this wheel. So I, I think they look great. I was able to, to find an original hitch. Um, I don't intend to really tow anything with it. But I just like the look. I, I like to try to keep it uh, as close to original as much as possible, uh, besides the lift and the tires. I did go with the with the spare tire. A lot of a lot of Jeepers don't run spares, but uh, I'm one of those guys that rather have it just in case I need it. Inside the engine compartment, you can see that I've replaced everything. It's got new hoses, new radiator, new belts, new motor. I replaced the carburetor, added power brakes, everything replaced all the way down to the horn. So this is it. Uh, this is what I've been doing in my garage for the past three and a half years. Um, it's been fun. I, I like it. I enjoy it. Uh, big stress reliever. I uh, love to come here in the evenings, uh, uh, put on some music, uh, drink a few beers, and bust some knuckles and turn a few wrenches. So uh, I hope you like my videos, and everybody out there, stay safe, uh, wash your hands, uh, keep social distance, and good luck, everyone. Oh, Albert, thank you so much for sending that video clip in. I really enjoyed taking a look at your CJ, and I only hope that my 79 Jeep Cherokee that I just got will someday be that nice. Thank you so much for that. You've got a great CJ, one that anyone would be proud of. Okay, let's go uh, take a look at another very cool Jeep. Hi Brad, my name is Luke, just checking in here from Southern Pennsylvania. Just wanted to take a few minutes and give you a tour of my Jeep Wrangler and matching Overland trailer. Starting up here at the Jeep, uh, we have a 2018 Wrangler JK, two-door, uh, it's just a sport. Um, as far as modifications go, we have a TerraFlex 2-inch leveling kit, JKS sway bar disconnects, truck light LED headlights, uh, the Rubicon rock sliders on the side there, and then the Rubicon front and rear steel bumpers. Um, under the hood, mostly stock, we do have an ARB air compressor and that just makes it easy when you're coming off the beach to be able to fill your tires right up. Moving on back, kind of the focal point of the video I wanted to talk about here is the trailer. Um, this is a 1965 Stevens M416. Um, it's something that was commonly issued to the United States Army and Marines back in the day. This one here, about a year and a half ago, was in the woods with a tree grown in it. I pulled it out and did all the restoration work myself, and uh, it was a great project, and it turned out pretty well. Moving in, a um, couple neat points about this one in particular. Um, it still retains its original panel hook. That's something that's somewhat hard to find on these. A lot of times they are cut off and replaced with a ball hitch. Gives you a little bit extra articulation, and it can actually rotate 360 degrees there at the front of the tongue. Um, this one still retains its handbrake. Uh, that was something that came on these from the factory. That's great for this setup because then you can leave the trailer as kind of a base camp and not have to worry about dragging it with you everywhere you go. As I did the restoration on the trailer, um, it was something um, I kind of had two iterations of. This here is the second iteration. The first, um, right when I first finished it, it had a little Amazon tent on it. Um, something that was only like 30 bucks and I cut it up and it worked well and I slept many nights in it. Got me to Overland Expo, but uh, 
you often got wet and it was a little cramped sleeping inside of there. So now the second iteration, we have a, uh, a hard top on it. That's nothing more than a three quarter inch sheet of plywood with some black aluminum trim and black vinyl glued to the top of it there. Um, clearing it up pretty clean. On top of that, we have a Rhino Rack roof rack, which supports the Tapui three person tent. Um, there in the front, we have a mountain bike mounted to it. It's just something I wanted to take with me just to get a little bit of exercise and give a little bit more possibilities to explore around. As you can see, everything's painted to match, black with silver wheels. Um, it was something that I wanted to keep, you know, more on the moderate side. And, you know, I'm a big fan of the OEM Plus look, so just to keep everything manageable and nice and small and clean was what I was going for. So let me go ahead and get the tent opened up, and I'll give you a quick tour of the camp and setup. All right, as you can see, we have the campsite all set up here. We have a couple camping chairs, the Coleman stove out on a little table, and we have the Tapui three-person tent all opened up. Moving into the trailer here, you can see we have the tailgate open. Originally, these trailers didn't come with a tailgate. Um, this was something that was cut in at some point in the past. When I did the restoration, I did go through and clean it up and uh, added the cables, and that just turned out to be a really nice little workspace. As you can see underneath, there's a support leg in the back. Um, that lets you camp in there without the Jeep connected, then the tongue of the trailer won't pop up and just gives it a little bit extra stability. Moving into the trailer here, um, to open the tailgate, there is these little boat hatches here. You just open those up with that little twist lock latch and then undo a pin on each side. Inside the trailer, and you can see um, all our gear is just some little black fabric totes. A couple of roto packs there in the front, fire extinguisher, which is always important to have. Um, you can see the lid is held onto the trailer with some aircraft cable, um, and then there is two little lights in there just to give you a little bit of visibility at night. Other than that, um, it's pretty much it. Inside the tent um, is the standard Tapui. Um, there is a USB light in there um, that lets you see at night. Other than that, um, I definitely appreciate everybody taking the time to watch the tour of the Jeep, and uh, thank you. Luke, thank you so much for submitting that. I love how much work you've put into restoring that trailer and what a great story behind it with a tree growing through it. That's totally cool. I can say that, you know, we've taken my wife's two door out with the trailer and we've had some great adventures and being a two door and the trailer, you're so nimble, but you can still carry all your gear. I think it's a great setup. All right, let's go take a look at a very cool YJ. Hey Brad, name's Alec. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri and big fan. Been watching your stuff for probably two years now. Uh, I actually have two Jeeps I'm going to show you guys today. I got a 1993 YJ, lifted up, 35s, the whole whole nine, if you will. And then I also have my everyday driver, which is a 2009 four-door JK. So we'll check those both out. Uh, again, been a big fan, a lot of inspiration from you guys. Uh, we're here in my garage right now. So without further ado, let's go check out the Jeeps. All right, guys, what we'll do first is start with the 1993 YJ here, square headlights and all, lifted up on 35s. Got some Mickey Thompson tires, got the square headlights there. One of my favorite features of the 93. Got the KC lights up top, shout out to KC and Rough Country for the lift kit. <clears throat> so this is actually my pride and joy here. This was my first ever car when I turned 16. Funny story, everybody said I was gonna flip it. Sure enough, it took me three months and I rolled it. As you can see there, the roll bar is a little bent. So this has been with me for six years now, and I absolutely love it. So you can see the inside. I mean, it's all stock, no radio. Pretty standard stuff here. Got the stick shift. So first car I learned stick on. It was a little challenging, but always fun. And then what I did is I actually took out the back seat. You can see it sitting in there now, but I used it as a, a work truck back in the day. It's actually how I paid for these very expensive tires and everything else that's gone in to the Jeep. I uh, cut grass all summer with it. So I'd throw my lawnmower and my gas tanks and weed eaters back there and we'd get into it. So definitely my pride and joy here, my 1993. Her name is Connie. So you can see I added the little spray paint accessories with the neon there. Got the tube fenders, all that good stuff. Yeah, she's definitely my pride and joy there. Right next to it, we have the 2009 JK Unlimited X here. Uh, running all stock underneath, stock tires, 
all that good stuff. I just plasti dipped them. Uh, getting ready to get some upgrades there, so that's the next project. But got the bumper and stuff on the front with the winch, Badland winch, pretty uh, economically efficient for sure. Got the aftermarket halo headlights, some cool sleeker fender flares. Got all the windows tinted. She's a little dirty right now. We actually took her to Disney, Oklahoma for a little off-roading trip. We'll go ahead and jump inside this bad boy here. You can see we got the regular command center there, if you will. Everything's pretty stock and standard in here. Nothing to it. So <clears throat> here's a shot of both of them together. Definitely been a Jeep guy forever. When I was a kid, I actually had the, the battery-powered Jeep, the little kids drive around in, actually flipped that as well, too. But I'm a Jeep guy through and through, a huge fan of the Page and Trail Recon altogether. Definitely got some inspiration on that guy from it, but this was my 16-year-old project here, so a little different. But, yeah, big fan. Shout-out to everybody who follows Trail Recon. All love. Oh, I love that YJ. It's got a great story and some history behind it. I mean, you cut in grass to do the modifications, you rolled it, but you're still keeping it and wheeling it. That's awesome. Thank you for that submission. I really, really appreciate that. Okay, let's go take a look at a really nice JK with a good backstory. My name is Alex, and I live in Los Angeles, California, and I own a 2016 Jeep Wrangler Sport that I would like to talk to you about. So I, like you, am a US Navy vet veteran. Um, I spent a lot of time at sea. I come from Puerto Rico, which is very much a place that you're always at sea and enjoying the sea. Uh, so my focus until last year was really on boats. I, I, I usually spend a lot of time still on boats. Um, but last summer, I, I just wanted a Jeep to hang around town and you know, uh, doors out, no roof. So I got a Jeep YJ, 1987, uh, very, very nice car. Um, I had to do a couple of upgrades. I put a fuel injector in it and I upgraded the uh, suspension. I did bumpers, winch, the whole thing. It looked great. While I was doing that, I got into looking at YouTube channels and I stumbled onto your channel and I don't know if it was between all your adventures or Marco's cooking, but I decided I got the overland bug. I gotta, I gotta do this. So enter the Jeep JK that we are looking at here. I am a novice, so I don't go into really hard trails or anything like that. I like cruising through easy trails at the moment and enjoy with my family. Um, that's been one of the great things about doing this is that I am able to uh, involve my family and make it sort of like a family ordeal. And the problem is you get a Jeep and there's so many things that you can do to it to make it your own that you're, you're never done. You're never done. Um, I'm constantly doing little things to it, adding uh, little door inserts or the guards, the fender guards inside. It's a piece of art and it's never done. It's like a Sistine Chapel for me. Uh, it has Rubicon uh, wheels with these needle tires on it. Um, and it had the wind, it, sorry, no, it did not have a winch, uh, nor the lights. It had uh, uh, the bumpers though. Um, mm -hmm. I had put into the Jeep YJ a, 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 a LED LED bar, uh, light bar. But I thought that that was not fitting the air out of the Jeep, so I bought a KC uh, Highlights uh, Gravity Pro uh, lights that were halogen. Uh, I thought that that was going to be a better look for that. But I got the bug to buy the JK at, that, at, at the time that I was about to install it. So I sold the YJ and I put those halogen lights on this Jeep first. The Apollo Pro lights work really well for a long time, but I wanted the lines of the Jeep to be different and I really like how the Gravity Pro 6s sit. So eventually I bought the Gravity Pro 6s and I swapped them. This is a very recent addition, um, but I'm really happy with it. My mechanical skills were maybe at a novice level. 
Um, I really like the same rack that you use, the Rhino rack, but I, um, I didn't want to drill through my, through my uh, hard top. Uh, so instead, I went with uh, this Adventure half rack. Uh, perfect for a rooftop tent and also very easy for me to take on and off the Jeep, although I've, I've never taken it off. I wanted to be able to put things on top of the roof rack that was not a rooftop tent uh, and I decided that I was going to go with the Rhino platform so I have a hybrid I have uh, that I can put a Rhino platform that I have uh, same as the one that you had for your Jeep and I can then strip it and leave it on the uh, half rack that I have now uh, and it took some it took some doing on my part to be able to get that done but it's proven to be the right combination for me and I, I do I do love it. I also put a little bit of a table at the back and I've done some of the things that I've seen are important. I have, I have invested in good recovery gear, follow some instructions and I made a, a bottle air system, a CO2 system on my own, which I've, I've used on the trails and it works like a charm. Overall, I'm really happy with where the Jeep is at right now, but you know, I keep, it's, it's always something. There's always something out there that you can, that you can do to it. Anyway, thank you for the time and, and I hope that you do pick this video to show. Uh, I think that this is a, a great um, adventure to get involved in with family and yourself and going and seeing parts of this great country and others that you know we haven't seen before. All right on. Well, Alex, let me say thank you for your service to our nation and thank you for submitting your video clip. I enjoyed taking a look at your Jeep and hearing a little bit of the story behind it. And you said it best at the end, there's always something to do on it. All right, let's go take a look at another Jeep. Hi, Trail Recon viewers. I want to show you my 2018 Jeep Sahara Wrangler. Let's go and take a look. Now, just to give you a background, I've always loved Jeeps while growing up. Me and my wife fell in love with Jeeps back in 1991 when I bought myself a graduating present. I purchased an eight-cylinder, three-speed 1978 CJ7. It was great. We had a blast out trailing and enjoying the outdoors. I reluctantly sold my Jeep as we were planning a family and Jeeps back then, well, were not family friendly. But we promised ourselves to get another one later once the kids were older. Now move over to the spring of 2017 when we finally decided to get another Jeep. We wanted a red Jeep with tan colored interior and none was available anywhere with all the other specs we wanted. We eventually had our local dealer order one directly from Jeep in Toledo. It was well worth the wait. Like most Jeep owners, we have been upgrading components ever since. Let's take a look. Sorry if my Jeep is dirty, guys. My son took it out earlier that day without knowing that I was going to film. At the front, I've installed a aluminum front bumper made by Barricade. To give me extra lighting, I've added two KC iLight Gravity G6 LED daylighters. At the front, we've installed a Smithy-built X2O 10,000 pound winch. It has a synthetic line, which makes it very light and very easy to use. Now for nighttime trailing, I've added four KC Highlight Daylighters. They really light up the trails. I roll on BF Goodrich 33 inch KO2s all terrain. Now to add some side protectors, I've added Red Rock Side Steps Rock Sliders. They are very sturdy and provide a good step to get into the Jeep. Now if we open up the back, you'll find a folding table, which is great for overlanding, and the holes in the table makes it great to hang accessories. Now looking at the back, you'll notice a uh, basic first aid kit that I always carry with me. Um, and it has a uh, trauma kit as well. We always carry bear spray as well as we often overland in bear country. And also to the back of the Jeep, we have a uh, fire extinguisher. Now, as we get into the uh, Jeep, you'll notice a ram mount for my eight inch tablet, which I use uh, running Gaia. All my electronics are set up on my Victor JKE dock. Now for communications, I use a CB radio and also have a uh, Jeep Unique CB mic holder uh, with a bracket for my handheld ham radio. I use 67 design holders and accessories. 
Controlling all my lights is an Apollo Intec 6 switch pod. We've added grab bars, organizers, and many other items that made our vehicle ours. I have named the Jeep the Kid in honor of my baseball hero growing up, Gary Carter of the Montreal Expos and the New York Mets. Also, Jeeping has brought out the Kid in us. We have made many friends while Jeeping. What I really like is the freedom felt when going out on the trail, exploring and overlanding. And I have to add that Trail Recon has been an inspiration to get out there. Thanks Brad for sharing this video and see you on the trails. Oh, that was a good video to watch. I enjoyed that. Thank you for sharing your Jeep story. What a great family vehicle. And obviously your son was out there using it and getting it muddy means it's a family affair, which that's awesome. It's great to have the family involved in off-roading and overlanding. Okay, one more to take a look at. I think you guys are going to dig this one. Hello, my name is Ulrich Götz. I come from Germany and I love my wife and Jeeps. This is my wife and this is my 2080 Jeep Wrangler Rubicon Unlimited JL. We had our Jeep equipped with an 270 degrees alu cap shadow awning and an alu cap rooftop tent, both mounted on a front runner roof rack. Our camping table is mounted under the roof rack too. But the special thing of our setup is the tunnel inside the Jeep so we go to the rooftop tent from inside the Jeep and we need no ladder. This is the way to our rooftop tent and my wife is already there. In the back of our car there are some interesting storage solutions. On the left side there is a box for food and cloths and the right side there is a kitchen box with a five liter running water and some tableware a camping cooker is there also in the box behind the kitchen box there is a storage for my recovery gear a good thing is also that there's enough space between the two boxes to sit when the weather is terrible and it's raining and it's storming so you can sit in the Jeep and another person can sit on this box. Sure, we have a tailgate table for our cooker. Five liter water are not enough in the kitchen box in the Jeep so we have two 10 liter water tanks on the right side. On the driver side there is a water resist suitcase and in this suitcase there is our complete shower gear. There are towels and a folding bucket for the water, 20 liter you can put in and here is the shower equipment we need to have a shower also with 12 volt. For some comfort when it's cold um, we have an autotherm diesel heater under the floor and this heater has two ways for the heat. One way come here out and the other way is very special. This is the heat goes through the tube in our rooftop tent. Of course we have a 40 liter bridge on the back side of the driver seat and there are some cold beers inside. Our power supply is a Suaoki G500 lithium um, generator and so is this is enough power for the fridge and also for our camera gear. This power supply will charge with our 120 watt foldable suitcase from Wattstunde. Outside I will show you next our 2.5 inch REV suspension, our BF Goodrich Car 02 tires uh, with on a Bavarian 
built rims and in the front side our ROX Challenge front bumper with an integrated warm Evo 112S winch that looks great and is great. Last but not least, let it sit down on the driver's seat and look on the dashboard with a Garmin Overlander on-road and off-road navigation system on a RAM mount, a mount for my outdoor smartphone, our Venture 4K dashcam and our small Sony 4K action cam. Thank you Brad from Trail Recon for this good idea and thank you guys for watching the video and I hope you will check out my YouTube channel Ulrich Götz, 7 Slots and 4 Wheels. So all the way from Germany, what a great Overland build. There's so many cool little details on that entire Jeep and I love the hole through the roof into the rooftop tent. Yeah, that was pretty sweet. All right, well look, I hope you have all enjoyed sitting down and relaxing and taking a look at these nine built Jeeps. I think they're awesome. There are so many video submissions and I am trying to go through them all and we'll try to play more and more of these here in the coming weeks. But I think it's so much fun just to take a look at all of your vehicles. A lot more videos to come here in the future. I hope you have enjoyed hanging out with me. Thanks for watching.